Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Krikor. Hi, I'm CC. <laughs> As you can see on the screen, there's a beautiful specimen of a man. And you may be asking, who in the world is this lovely madman? Well, it's Thomas Nast. He who made the world of comic cartoons go around. Now I know what you're thinking. No, he did not make the Garfield comics. We all wish he did. Remembering when times were easy back in 09, when you'd wake up in your little Spider-Man underwear, you'd go to the kitchen, grab a cup of coffee, and read these great comics all morning. But no, that was not Thomas Nast. Now, well, since we clearly don't know enough about Thomas Nast, or uh, we think uh, he made Garfield comics, um, maybe we should get to know a little backstory about him. Well, Thomas Nast was born September 27th, 1840, and he sadly passed away on December 7th, 1902. His first political drawing was published in Harper's Weekly on March 19, 1859, which was on police corruption. So, like I said, if he didn't make Garfield, uh, Garfield comics and he made police corruption comics, did, well, did he make anything else? Well, yes, he did. Instead, he made cartoons like these. And I bet you you've probably seen these in class somewhere, maybe, or maybe on Google. I really don't know. Um, oh, well... He didn't make that cartoon. No, he did not make the Eminem cartoon, guys. But, I'll be honest, Eminem and Thomas Nass actually, funny enough, have, do have something in common. And I know it's crazy, but they're both the best at what they do. Thomas Nass is the greatest at making cartoons, and Eminem is the greatest at being the best rapper alive. And that's facts. But, okay, whatever. Back back onto the main topic. This is not important. Um, So, back on Thomas Nass' cartoons. The idea of political cartoons changed the spread of reforming ideas during the time of the progressive movement. In order to understand what political cartoons are, we're going to need to take a step back and understand where they were used in the first place. Take a look at these two images. They're both advertising the same brand of sunglasses, but which is more appealing? My guess is you said this one. And that's because the bright colors and obscure faces on comics and cartoons are memorable and bring a lighthearted touch to the cold-hearted world of politics. Like, look at these cartoons. The use of bright colors and accepted features help spread notable messages about our political climate. So, Thomas took his immense artistic skill he had, even when he was young, and turned it into something wonderful. So, why did old Tommy Nast have to draw these cartoons? Political machines! Oops, wrong slide, sorry. There we go, that's better. So you may be asking yourself, what are political machines? Well, allow me to elaborate. The concept of political machines are quite evilly genius, really. These were a small group of organization that was headed by a single person or a group of typically very wealthy people who were able to scheme and persuade their way into getting the majority of the vote in a specific area. A major example of this was Boss Tweed, leader of the famous Tammy Hall machine, which prevailed for almost two centuries. So how did political machines work? There are multiple different levels, starting at the, pre the precinct captains. The precinct captains would work for the ward boss and would attempt to gather votes in a specific, specific area slash neighborhood. The ward boss would take the, the votes that the precinct captains would get and try to gain votes for an entire election district. They would work directly under the boss. Essentially, they're like the manager. The boss. The boss would oversee everything and would use the power he has now obtained for his advantage. The overseer would use his power to how they see fit, even if it meant hurting the people in their cities. Overall, this was a very undemocratic moment in this movement. So, what was the big issue, really? Well, political machines were able to take full control over their city. Bosses would take money used for their campaign for their own benefit instead of helping to benefit the others. A lot of effort would go into defending those of higher status than governing with intention of benefiting everyone. Because of this prominent control, the great public was highly affected. The rich would become richer and the poor would become poorer, leading to a slow decline of the middle class. Collision between private businesses and major government officials due to bribery and fraud was also very prominent. And lastly, due to the overwhelming constant control of these machines, it was difficult for the people's voices to be heard. And that's why the reform happened, when mass amounts of people would come together, creating a force so strong they were able to begin to make a change. Thomas Nass has always been big on promoting ideas of change through his political cartoons, whether it be abolition of slavery and exploiting autocratic leaders. So it was no surprise that when the country banded together to make big changes, that Nast was right by their side. 
Thomas Nass was a, was a ruthless man who never pulled any punches. Yep, I do mean in the ring. Nah, I'm just playing. But Thomas Nass did not stop spreading awareness against political machines. Similar to the downfall of one of the most prominent political machines, Boss Tweed. Due to the illiteracy of Tweed's supporters, political cartoons were a great way to spread messages among supporters. Due to the major attention his pictures got, public outrage ensued. As seen here, Nass was able to use up a loaded concept of Tammany Hall to communicate the corruption behind the scene. Thomas Nass takes down Boss Tweed in a landslide. Thomas Nass repeatedly presses attacks against Boss Tweed. Tom Thomas Nass political cartoons were released on Harper's Weekly and The Ring. This is how beef was settled back in the day, on paper, not on the internet. Well, with beef comes a loss of clout, and Tammy Hall was the victim to that. As controversy spread, a large amount of supporters were lost, and with that, a lot of their political power. However, Nass was on the opposite end of the spectrum, and gained major polit political influence. Through this, he was able to expose Boss Tweed for, for the corrupt and horrid actions he did, which eventually led him to an imprisonment, and many Tammy Hall members, including the man himself. And thus began the decline of the political machines. One. So what did we learn? Political, political cartoons are used to do their eccentric characters, style, and meaningful messages. During the Gilded Age, we see the rise of political machines. These are later learned to be a corrupt and unethical organizations. Thomas Nast was very passionate about change and reformation, and was a big leader in the pro progressive movement. The spread of something as simple as a cartoon was able to encourage those who once admittedly supported a group to vote them out of office. Due to Nast's ingenious ideas to spread a message, the infamous and powerful Tammany Hall was able to immensely decline. And clearly, Creekor thinks he's very, very funny, so sorry about that. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>